Hey, what's going on there, folks? Welcome back here to another update on this fine Tuesday evening. This is the Earthmaster here on this Wednesday, uh, well, Tuesday, February 6, 2024. Not quite Wednesday yet. It's coming upon us. Uh, about 10.58 p.m. here, California time. Latest activity shows a 1.6 into Texas and also uh, looks like a 1.8 there on the big island of Hawaii. Uh, before we get to earthquake activity, just want to cover some space weather events here popping off. Had a couple large M flares here over the last couple days, uh, M4.2 and an M5.1. Uh, the recent one here was an M5.1. Now, this area of interest is going to be sunspot number 3575, which is off the southwestern limb of the sun. Just about out of sight, out of mind, but it is producing quite a bit of flaring and continues to be a threat uh, for some further strong flares, including some X flare probability. So just keep an eye on 3575. Uh, we also have this large sunspot region here currently facing the earth uh, that is quite dynamic and that does harbor some potential for some x flare probability as well now the difference between these two sunspots well this one's going bye bye and this one is sticking around here for a couple days uh, and it will be uh directly facing the earth uh here uh, in a day or so anything that does blast off here will of course uh, be geo effective uh, but once it gets into this zone uh, directly looking at the earth and uh, we have to watch for some uh, potential effects from these uh, events but for now uh, we got about 99 percent chance for a c flare m flare at 60 x flare still elevated around 25 percent chance and again those two sunspot regions 3575 and 3576 harbor uh, potential for some x flare as they hold a beta gamma delta class structure in their magnetic fields no major roars in the forecast for now, but uh, hopefully we can change that here as we uh, uh, maybe hopefully we'll get some large CMEs or directed. All right, uh, earthquake activity. What's going on out here? Idaho shaking a little bit today. Uh, I did see an, um, there's a 3.8. That says 8 o'clock this morning, but I'm pretty certain I just seen something come in here recently uh, to that area. Huh. Maybe it was in the, in the update from this morning. I got it on my phone just a little bit ago. But I'm really not seeing anything showing up here on the USGS map. Uh, nothing going on here th through Yellowstone. It looks like a little 1.5. But uh, I do want to double check that real quick and see what's going on up here. Uh, we got to go back to the previous UTC time. And, well, there's definitely not a whole lot of local seismic activity um, to point out. A lot, a lot of this here is some outside interference patterns. Uh, not, I don't believe that's associated with any type of, uh, seismic activity or volcanic activity. A lot of time, uh, a lot of times wind can show up here. Quite a bit of wind. Thunderstorms can show up as well, including snow and all sorts of stuff. Environmental noise is a big trigger out here on these seismograph stations. But for now, not a whole lot of, uh, seismic activity to speak of. A little small little spike of an earthquake here. All right, uh, bouncing out of here and looking into the Pacific Northwest here. A uh, couple of earthquakes there around Mount St. Helens and Mount Rainier. Uh, nothing big. It's been a little while since we've checked Mount St. Helens uh, information here. So I'm going to go check that real quick and see uh, if anything's going on. By the way, 22 epicenters of tremor into the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. Down quite a bit there from yesterday. We had a, a decent uptick yesterday. <clears throat> But it uh, looks like that's calming back down with 22 epicenters. Uh, volcanic seismicity maps here around the um, Mount St. Helens area. Let's see what's going on here. There's a handful of smaller quakes. Of course, last year we had a, a decent swarm of activity out here. Let's see what's going on here uh, as we look at the latest data. This is around the, uh, the summit region. There's a little spike of an earthquake right here, I believe. Uh, again, this could be, you know, blowing snow. It could be ice on the seismograph stations. Uh, but uh, why did that disappear here? Hmm. All right. Let me see if I can go back. They don't keep records, huh? They only want to show what's current, I guess, at least from the PNSN network. Uh, either way, there's not a whole lot of earthquake activity out here. This is a well-defined seismograph station showing the... The squiggly line that you would normally see on any uh, seismograph drum, but this is the digital version. And uh, just a little, uh, little spike there across the area. Um, do want to check out the gas emissions up there, see if we got any noticeable activity um, across the area. I like to just check these volcanoes on occasion, see if anything's stirring up around them. Uh, of course, back in, uh, I think it was September, 
October time frame of last year, we've seen a decent earthquake swarm out here around the Mount St. Helens area, and that has since kind of died off. Um, these are the gas monitoring stations out here, sulfur dioxide, fairly low, hydrogen sulfide, uh, super low. Um, I'm really not seeing anything that would show any elevated activity out here, so that's a, that's a good thing, right? All right, and all the other uh, volcanoes out there across the Cascades are, uh, well, looks fairly green. Nothing of interest for now. Uh, one day that will not be the case because, you know, these volcanoes, they go through little periods of quiet uh, times, but eventually they come back to life. Uh, Kilauea Volcano out here on the Big Island of Hawaii. Not a, uh, not a huge uptick in earthquake activity, but we are noticing just a little bit here. Uh, some recent activity here southwest of the... Um, summit area the tilt meter of course there across the Kilauea volcano continues to rise um, and another station over here just south uh, about the time when the magma uh, moved from the summit region to the southwest rift zone uh, the tilt meter the uwe tilt meter station went flat line or went uh, deflationary tilt while this went inflationary and then it dropped back down um, and this station is a little bit further up north. I wish we had a station right around here. Um, as far as the tilt meter goes, that would give us a good indicator where that magma is currently sitting. Uh, but there was a lot and it all moved over here. Um, and it's still sitting down there. It didn't just disappear. Um, I, I just wish we had some type of, uh, tilt meter activity out here, which we don't. Uh, GPS stations out here obviously does show a sharp increase here. Um, but this, you know, this is, these are G, uh, GPS plots and not really up to the minute type thing, you know, uh, far as a tilt meter would show. Uh, seismograph station here across the area. These are, um, <clears throat> these are from the 6th, um, UTC time of, uh, well, the 7th at 0200. Let me see. Is that right? Uh, we're a little behind again. It looks like we went, it looks like it went offline. About uh, maybe f five hours ago, because it should be 0700 UTC time. So we're offline. This isn't the current data, at least on that station. Um, closer up here, the seismograph station here. Let's see if we can pull this up. Um, this one is the same. So whatever happening, uh, it went offline again here. It's just been a common deal. I think it's only one man trying to uh, handle this, uh, these little bugs that uh, pop up here across the seismograph stations there. But uh, eventually they'll get it back up and running. As far as earthquake activity, yes, it's showing up. Still quite a bit out here, quite a bit. Uh, really no major change, though, in terms of eruptive activity there across the big island of Hawaii for now. All right, uh, that was kind of a wild ride there through earthquakes and volcanoes. Uh, one little earthquake here, 1.4 in Oregon. I like to watch these little ones here because if they're deep, then obviously we're looking at Cascadia uh, subduction zone quakes. But uh, this one's pretty deep. That was about 4 o'clock this morning, 2.2 .2 into the subduction zone there, about uh, 37 kilometers. Uh, let's see what else we got here. California. Let's see if we got anything major going on. Not yet, but uh, kind of curious to see what all this rainfall is going to do. To the fault systems out here, right? Southern California has seen a tremendous amount of rainfall. If you think about it, um, you know, that's got to play some type of part and effect on the fault systems out here. Just uh, the question is if it's going to be enough to trigger any uh, large quakes out here following this uh, rainfall event. But for now, mostly small microquakes. No, really, not really any elevated activity out there that I can see. Um, see here, of course, we've got the Hawaii activity still stirring up. Um, the Alaska area, got one earthquake here in the red circle, 2.1 northwest of Anchorage here off of the fault system, the Castle Mountain Fault. This area can see some large earthquakes, no doubt. But for now, some smaller quake activity. Uh, getting a little swarming going on here across the Philippines area. This is normally not a good sign on the Philippine Trench. That could be a, a sign that things are getting ready to show some larger movement out there. Really no main quake with this activity out here, at least specifically in this zone. Uh, seen quite a few fives and uh, a couple fours in there as well over the last 24 hours. So keep an eye on that region. Philippine Trench is a uh, definitely a big quake maker. 
5.3 up here north of the Philippine Sea region. So this whole area has shown some elevated earthquake um, pressure, uh, plate pressure out here. All right, 5.1, that's on the uh, western side here of Japan. This is kind of the area that's seen that larger quake activity. Uh, has it been over 30 days now? It has already, goodness, since they've seen that larger scout movement out here. Uh, but for now, just still seeing some, uh, some aftershock movement. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Not a whole lot else showing up on the USGS map. Um, there's that clustering going on here on the Earthquake 3D globe. Uh, recent five-pointer here north of the uh, Vanuatu region. Fairly deep here into the subduction zone underneath the Santa Cruz Islands region. A five-pointer at 194 kilometers deep. It's pretty deep out there. So keep an eye on this region here. That could be a uh, point towards some further surface adjustment. 3.5 down there in South Island area. Um, not a whole lot going on here across the New Zealand region for now. And the rest of the world out here, well, some older quake activity out here in the uh, little fracture zone out here. And also down in South Africa, seeing a little 3.2 being reported by the USGS. Iceland activity really doesn't look like anything further is going on there. But let's go ahead and double check that. See if we got anything to uh, chat about. Um, 31 earthquakes here in the last 12 hours. Now, since this morning's update... Looks like a little uh, handful more earthquakes around this rift zone here, including a two-pointer. Uh, this one coming in uh, a few hours or so ago, but definitely getting close here, I feel, to uh, maybe seeing some more uh, eruptive activity around the region. Definitely continue to watch that for some signs, and the signs will be definitely some big-time elevated earthquake activity out there. Right now, I'm just not seeing it, but uh, definitely want to watch that pretty closely. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Anything else going on besides space weather and earthquake activity? Um, ch -ch 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 -ch. don't think so. There's not a whole lot, uh, happening right now. Let's check out seismograph stations here. Fairly quiet. Not seeing anything major going on there across the region. Uh, weather outlook here. Uh, thunderstorm activity continuing there in Southern California. Just general thunderstorm activity. Uh, really nothing severe to chat about, at least according to the uh, uh, Storm Prediction Center. Now this area is still seeing some rainfall down there in Southern California. Another round of rain is headed uh, from the northwest this time. This is not going to bring a whole lot of precipitation, but it will bring some further showers in the Northern California and eventually down there in the Southern California as well. But uh, they'll have a little time to dry out. I know they picked up some historical rainfall amounts down there in Southern California. Um, the next big potential. Now, I've been watching these weather models. A lot of people don't even like to look this far out, but I do like to look and see what the computer models are trending to. And potentially, we could be looking at a repeat of what just happened there in Southern California a little deeper into February. Look at this. It got that fire hose moisture coming in, atmospheric river with a bomb cyclone off the coast here at California. That could be, uh, you know, it's kind of trending towards the same type of setup that we just got through seeing there in Southern California. So we'll have to watch that. And then behind that, maybe another one. Uh, so this could be, uh, you know, quite the year out here along the West Coast if, this, if these models trend um, to be true as we head towards the, uh, about, it looks like it's about the, Right about there, the 19th time frame of February. It's a ways out, but I'm going to continuously check these models and uh, see if these verify. Uh, if they do, then goodness, that's going to be quite a bit of rainfall out there. All right, uh, I think that's about it here, folks. I'm out of here. Um, have yourself a good night. Uh, really not a whole lot uh, new information here. I was just checking out the rivers out here across California and uh they're going down uh, we did have a couple uh river gauges up here along the sacramento river that were getting close to uh, a flood stage but they have since died down into the um uh, the green range which is good a couple other stations here around calusa and um a little bit further up north looks like they're still near the flood stage of course you got to remember all that runoff 
from the creeks and whatnot all running into the Sacramento River. So sometimes these uh, are elevated days after uh, the rain stops. Down there in Southern California, i um, seen quite a bit of crazy video of uh, the heavy rain that they've received. And uh, you no doubt, it's definitely been a uh, quite the wet year out here, and we're not done with the uh, we're not done with the winter patterns yet. Definitely have to keep an eye on that uh, storm system coming up here. Um, let me see here. Let me put this refresh. This this is for uh, rainfall through Wednesday. It shows so this is the estimated additional precipitation through Wednesday. Uh, this was issued earlier this morning, so this included today. Um, this is not, you know, after tonight. This is basically today's rainfall and whatever else is going to fall on um, Wednesday. Here's that lighter precipitation uh, that's coming in with the next storm. Not a soaker, but still any uh, additional rainfall on the already soaked ground could cause some issues out there. And, um, you know, a little bit more rain coming into the Southern California area for sure. Uh, aside from that, folks have yourself a beautiful evening and i will catch you guys back here tomorrow morning wednesday we're halfway through the work week that's a always a good sign right got to make it through another day or two and then uh, the weekend will be upon us once again have a good one catch you guys back here wednesday morning take care folks